Introduced in 1722 as the Land Pattern Musket, it gained the moniker of Brown Bess sometime in the mid-18th century, although no one is quite sure where the name truly originates. This weapon is a smoothbore muzzle-loading flintlock musket, with an effective range of about 100 meters, though its smooth barrel makes pinpoint accuracy a tall order. Both sides used British-made versions of the weapon, but the Continental Army would begin to manufacture their own during the war. The Springfield Model 1795 musket was produced by Eli Whitney, the inventor of the cotton gin, and he based the design of the new weapon heavily on the French Charleville Model 1763 musket that was used extensively during the French and Indian War. This too was a muzzle-loading smoothbore musket and the first official service weapon of the United States. This musket aided US troops defending the ramparts of Baltimore during the battle where the Star-Spangled Banner was written. This rifle is a variant of the Springfield Model 1816 and featured a percussion lock, making it much more reliable and resistant to weather than flintlock muskets. It had an intentionally thicker barrel than necessary, the designers assuming that the barrel would someday need to be rifled to fire newer, more accurate ammunition, which it eventually was. The Springfield Model 1842 would remain in service until the end of the Civil War, but was replaced as standard issue well before then. Introduced in 1861, the Springfield Model 1861 was a muzzle-loading rifled musket design, firing the new mini-ball ammunition that was much more effective than the round musket balls commonly in service at that time. The Springfield would be used by both sides of the Civil War, with over a million produced during its course, the weapon being far more accurate and deadly than previous smooth-bore designs. This would be the last musket design issued as standard by the US Armed Forces, The Model 1873 would be the first standard-issue breech-loading rifle in the history of America's armed forces. It was incredibly powerful, so much so that soldiers remarked that the rifle could knock two men down with each shot, the man it hit, and the man who fired it. The rifle did have one key flaw, it used copper cartridges, and due to the heat created when firing the weapon, the copper could expand and make it incredibly difficult to extract the cartridge but it was nonetheless praised for its power and accuracy. Adopted in 1892, the Krag Jorgensen bolt-action rifle, also known as the Krag, was a Norwegian-designed weapon intended to replace the single-shot Model 1873. The rifle would see combat in the Spanish-American and Philippine-American wars, but the crack didn't hold up very well in the tropical climates of Cuba and the Philippines. Heavy casualties in the Spanish-American War were pinned on the crag, and a replacement was sought, with the model 1892 replaced as standard issue in 1903, making it one of the shortest-lived standard issue firearms in American military history. Entering service in 1903, the M1903 Springfield was based on captured Mauser Model 1893 rifles from Spanish troops in Cuba, and was the first American standard issue firearm chambered in 30 6 During World War I, it saw action across the Western Front as both an infantry and sniper rifle, and, with the addition of a Pedersen device, could fire pistol-grade cartridges with a semi-automatic operation. Remaining in use until the 1970s, the M1903 is a proven and battle-tested rifle design. The 
The M1 Garand is possibly the most iconic weapon of World War II, dubbed the greatest implement of battle ever devised by General George Patton, and against America's primarily bolt-action equipped enemies, Patton may have been right. Chambered in 30 6 Springfield and feeding out of on-block clips, this long-stroke piston-operated rifle served in combat far past its time as the standard issue weapon, the US making some 5.5 million between 1934 and 1957, but still being found in soldiers' hands in Vietnam. A veteran of all theatres of World War II, along with the Korean War, the M1 Garand gained a reputation for accuracy, reliability, and ruggedness. As famous for its unique ping after ejecting a spent clip, as it's famous for the battles it helped win, the Garand was the perfect weapon for the wars that it fought. Possibly the two most problematic rifles fielded by the United States in its history, the M14 and M16 gained quite a reputation in Vietnam, and certainly not a good one. The M14 was the spiritual successor to the M1 Garand, chambered in the 7.62x54mm NATO round, but it was too long, heavy, and lacked the firepower to compete with the Kalashnikovs that it was fighting against. Its unwieldy nature in automatic fire further stressed a need to find a replacement. That replacement, the M16, was a whole nother disaster, its tendency to jam and experience stoppages during combat causing heavy casualties. Furthermore, soldiers distrusted it due to its fiberglass construction and smaller 5.56x45mm cartridge. Improvements would be made with the M16A1 design in 1970, and some faith would be restored in the platform as a result. Adopted in 1983, the M16A2 was a new variant of the M16, seeking to rectify the issues that plagued the weapon in Vietnam. Since 1970, different powder had been introduced that produced less residue in the gun action. The barrel, chamber, and bore were chrome-lined to improve sturdiness, cleaning kits were issued, and better training programs developed. This new version featured a heavier barrel, better rifling, improved rear sights, a rounded handguard, and most importantly, a three-round burst over automatic fire in order to conserve ammunition. The A2 functioned much better, and was vastly more reliable than the rifle that served in Vietnam, and its frontline use in the Gulf War fully cemented faith in the platform. This design would also spawn the equally prolific M4 carbine. The M16A4, adopted in 1996, was essentially the same as the A2, albeit the A4 had a removable carrying handle and various Picatinny rail mounts for accessories. Other improvements include a modified flash suppressor, new polymer buttstock, and a spent case deflector for left-handed users. With the global war on terror beginning in 2001, the M16A4 had no shortage of combat operations, serving as the US standard issue rifle in Iraq and Afghanistan and now being famed for its reliability, rather than distrusted because of it. The most recent addition to the American arsenal, the SIG MCX Spear, soon to be the M7, will be the new standard service rifle of the US military. After defeating competition from the likes of FN and Beretta, the Spear was selected as the winner of the Next Generation Squad Weapon Competition in 2022, with this new rifle on its way to the hands of American soldiers. 